G'day everyone, my name is Dominic from Tom's Outdoors and today we're going to talk about ultralight hiking um, and give you a sort of step-by-step -step guide on how to get into it because it can seem a little bit daunting at first. So we're going to break it down into some easy steps and uh, get you started in ultralight hiking. So first of all, it's important to go over sort of what is ultralight hiking. Put simply, ultralight hiking is um, a style of hiking where you carry the essentials in an effort to experience a different kind of hiking. So personally for me, I got into ultralight hiking um, when I had a long distance hike coming up called the AWT. I was looking at ways on how to reduce the weight of my pack because I wanted to see more. I wanted to cover more distance in a day. For others, it could be reducing the stress on your body that hiking takes. Um, obviously hiking with a lightweight pack makes it a lot easier on your joints and your feet. But now with ultralight hiking, I can enjoy the whole day from sunrise to sunset. Uh, and I particularly like the minimal aspect, of, you know, not, not carrying much. It's really liberating in a way, you know, you're out there with just the essentials uh, and you learn to, you know, rely on, rely on nature a little bit more. So if any of these reasons sound good to you, here are a few steps on how you can get started in ultralight hiking. So the first step we're gonna go over, and probably one of the most important, is to actually track your weight. Get all of your gear, everything that you hike with, um, put it in a tub and weigh everything. It might sound silly at first, but it's really important not to leave anything out because every gram does really count and you'll notice even the smallest things do add up. Uh, so I mean, weigh your charging cables, weigh your first aid kit, uh, weigh everything that you're going to need on the trail, and this is gonna really help you get a good overview at what you're taking um, and what things you can cut out of your current kit. So when tracking the weight of all of your gear, some people use a spreadsheet, uh, but one of the most popular programs out there, websites, uh, one that I've used since I started is called Lighter Pack, which you may or may not have already heard of. Uh, and that's a website you can jump on and pretty much list every item that you own. You can set them in different categories and it gives you a really good visual overview of where the weight's coming from. And what I love about tracking my gear is that it also doubles as a pack list for when I'm going on trips. I can easily add things on or take things off depending on where I'm going to be hiking. For example, if I'm going on a winter trip, I need to swap out my tent or my sleeping bag. And during this step of tracking your weight, you'll want to get familiar with the terms base weight, total packed weight, and worn weight. And these are the three main distinctions that we make uh, in ultralight hiking. So just quickly, base weight is the weight of all of your gear minus consumables. So add all the gear up that you'll be taking for a trip, and then take out your water, take out your food, take out things like toilet paper and gas, um, and then you're gonna have your base weight. So that's the most important number to know. Uh, it's a good gauge because that's what you're taking. Um, food and water and things can vary depending on the trip. So having your base weight keeps it consistent. So total packed weight is the weight of everything you'll be taking for a trip, uh, minus your worn weight. So everything that's gonna be in your pack, the total amount of kilograms that's on your back, that will be your total packed weight. And lastly, there's worn weight which is the weight of everything that you're going to be wearing uh, for the duration of your walk. So moving on to the next step, which is really going to be a valuable way to reduce the weight. Uh, it's easy and it's free. And that's going to be lay out all your gear after you've tracked everything in your spreadsheet or your lighter pack. Take a look at everything you've got and start to take things out one by one. Take out the unnecessary items. And in this step, you're really going to have to be brutal with yourself you're gonna to have to ask yourself, do I really need to be taking this with me? And you will have to make sacrifices. It's all part of ultralight hiking and, and the minimalist lifestyle that it brings. If you don't need it on your hike, try leaving it at home. And you'll often find things that you take out that you've, you've been carrying it in your pack for many years and you'll realize that you didn't actually need it. So after you've looked at everything and you've brought it back to the bare necessities, what you wanna do is look at the particularly heavy items that you've got and see if you can replace it with any lighter alternatives that you already own. So for me, a good example of this was what knife to bring. Now, I'd always carried a knife on all of my hikes. Um, I'd carried this Leatherman multi-tool, which is fantastic, I love it, but it is 
uh, about 200, 250 grams, which is quite heavy for what it is. It's a knife, it's got a lot of accessories, but I rarely used it. So I thought, what did I have that could be a good lightweight substitute to my Leatherman multi-tool? And that's when I thought, that's right, I've got a lightweight climbing knife that I've used for rock climbing. This thing weighs about 40 grams and it does the same job as my Leatherman, so I only really use the blade if I ever need to use it. Um, so that's a really good example of swapping a heavier item for a lighter one that you already own. And the final weight saving tip for this step is a really crucial part in ultralight hiking and that is finding items that serve two purposes. Now in my case that was an inflatable pillow. So I looked and I found a Hyperlite stuff sack fleece pillow, which is a pillow but also a stuff sack. So that means when I'm not sleeping at night, I still have something, a use for it, um, and I don't need to take a spare dry bag anyway. So remember for this step, it was cut unnecessary items that you don't need, replace heavier items with lighter items that you already own, and then lastly, find items that serve two purposes. And they're all really good ways to save weight when you're starting out, uh, and it's free as well, which is always handy getting started. So once you've cut out all unnecessary items and we've done the previous steps that we've gone over, you'll want to take a look at the big three. Now, if you're not familiar with the big three, uh, this includes your sleeping system, which is sleeping mat and sleeping bag, shelter, and also uh, your pack. Now, these are called the big three because they're usually the biggest and the heaviest items of any hiking kit. And this is where you can also save the most amount of weight. So in taking a look at your sleeping system, there are a few ways you can save weight in this category. Uh, for example, if you've been using a rectangular mat, you might be able to shave off a couple hundred grams by changing to a tapered mat, depending on how you sleep. Another way is if you've been using a winter mat, you might be able to find a mat that's going to serve you for the majority of the year, rather than having one big heavy one that you use across the year. And then same thing with your sleeping bag. Instead of having a big, heavy winter bag um, just for the coldest nights, maybe you can find a three season bag that's gonna cover you for three seasons of the year. And then in winter, you can beef it up by wearing your puffer jacket at night. It's gonna give you extra warmth or adding a um, thermal liner and things like that. So it's all about versatility in this category. The next part of the big three will be your shelter. And you might want to experiment with tarps or even hammocks and have a bit of fun with it, find out what's going to work for you because there are a lot of great options out there for ultralight hiking and it's all about tailoring it to your needs and, and, and how you like to hike. And the last of the big three will be your pack. I've been using the Hyperlight Junction 2400 which has been fantastic as my first ultralight pack. Um, but an important thing to note is that if you're getting into ultralight hiking, don't get your ultralight pack first. It's much more important to transition the rest of your gear to ultralight before you upgrade with an ultralight pack because it'll be far more comfortable carrying an ultralight kit in an ultralight pack um, than carrying a heavy kit in an ultralight pack, which is not how they're designed. And a good tip for when you do get an ultralight pack is that you get one with a smaller capacity than what you think you'll need. Now this will force you to reduce the amount of bulk that you carry and you'll have to get creative in ways to save space as well as weight. So for my ultralight kit, I use a 40 litre backpack, which has served me well from overnight hikes to long distance through hikes. So the next simple step you can take to reduce weight in your ultralight kit is to take a look at your clothing. And there are a lot of opportunities to save weight in this category. For example, now when I hike, I just take a set of day clothes and a set of bed clothes. Whereas on previous hikes, I used to take uh, three shirts, I used to take a couple of pairs of pants, um, and it was really excessive. It would take up a lot of room in my pack, and it was easy to cut down when I brought it back to the basics and I just took what I really needed. So how you can cut weight in this category is to get really versatile and smart about the options uh, of clothing that you're taking with you. Take a look at your layering system for the most effective clothing pieces for each trip, um, what you're going to need, and what's gonna cover you for all bases so you don't get stuck carrying too many clothes. So here are a few examples um, of where you can save weight in the clothing category. Uh, I used to hike with a hoodie on most of my trips, but there is a lighter alternative and that's my R1, which is breathable and warm and does everything the hoodie does, 
but it's much lighter and packs much smaller. Another example is the pants that I take when I hike. Now my Falraven Vita Pros, I love them, they're great. Uh, I still use them on a number of hikes, but when I'm going ultra light, there is a lighter alternative. My Patagonia Torrent Shell pants. Now, I'll, if I take my Falraven pants, I'll need to be taking waterproof bottoms as well. So I'll take my shell pants and my shorts, layer them up, so they serve two purposes and cut out a lot of weight. And finally, I swapped out my Falraven shell, which I do love on certain hikes, but again, when going ultra light, my lightweight alternative is a Patagonia Torrent Shell, which doubles as my waterproof. So with the clothing, experiment with different garments, and it's really important to tailor what you're going to take to each trip so you, you can get the most out of your clothing. So the final step is go out and use your gear. Go do shakedowns and, and constantly be experimenting and learning, seeing what you need and what you don't need. And you know, it's, it's easy to get caught in a cycle of, of reading articles and counting grams and, and watching videos. But you know, a really good tip is just to get out there and use your gear and find what works for you. So they're gonna be the basics to get started with ultralight hiking. And just to go over them, you've got track your gear, cut unnecessary items from your kit, Take a look at the big three, your shelter, your sleeping bag, and your pack. Experiment with your clothing, and just get out there and use your gear. See what works and what doesn't. Remember that it's a marathon and not a sprint. It's not something that you have to transition into in a day. You can start slowly and build it up, and just enjoy the process. And when you get to a point where you can't even feel the weight on your back, uh, there's honestly no better feeling, and you can really just enjoy being out there and enjoying what it means to hike. So yeah, those are my steps on how I got into ultralight hiking when I started and I hope it's given you a bit of an idea of, of where to get going. If you have any questions, please just give us a call at Tom's. I'm more than happy to have a chat um, and help you get started. Uh, you can also send us an email um, or check us out on our website.